Okay, Alicia, I have to say you left this game with a smile on your face. And not a lot of people can actually say that. Why was it important just to leave in a positive way? Um, you know, you can choose to have a negative or a positive experience. And, you know, throughout the whole show, a lot of people, you know, they thought it was bullied and they felt bad for me. But, you know, I, I thought a lot more than what was shown. And I was more or less just laughing at these guys the whole time. You know, if you're going to, you know – portray yourself in that type of light and you have daughters like that is not you know projecting yourself as a role model so you know I just you know laughed it last through the game and stay positive and I didn't let those guys get to me I remained you know just in an upbeat attitude so it didn't right. save me at all I was okay they, they really did treat you poorly out there I don't know if it was you know maybe the way it was edited or what but do you think it was accurately portrayed in the editing that they were just you know attacking 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 um, they were mean to me, but the thing is, in the first couple of episodes, it's never to my face. It's always in the interview. Mm -hmm. The minute that they're mean to my, this is what the, a lot of the fans don't realize, is the minute they're mean to my face, I don't put up with it. I, I mean, we're like, we're like David and Goliath. He's a lot bigger than me, but I'm not. So, my face. Um, because I don't believe, I believe in standing up for yourself no matter how big a person is. I don't believe in being intimidated by anything. So the first couple of episodes, I didn't really know what was being said about me behind closed doors. So that's kind of why I may have looked a little helpless and defenseless. But reality is I'm a lot more feisty and I'll pop off more than was shown. Right. And Jeff kind of hinted at that. Jeff kind of said that that might be why you were on the Brown tribe because of you. Maybe not your muscles, but because of your your attitude and your personality. Yeah, I mean, had they said more things to my face, I would have stood up for myself. But like I said, the first couple of episodes, it's all in the interviews. It's it's all when I'm not around. And, you know, mm -hmm. a quote that kind of I like is, it's, rudeness is a weak person's imitation of strength. And, um, you know, they, they stereotyped me from day one, and they did not want to give me a chance to come in. Right. And last night's reward challenge, oh, my gosh, that was like one for the record books with Caleb and Debbie and Sydney <laughs> all going down. Can you tell us what it was like to be there and witness all of this drama? So we had not really had any water or anything to eat. I woke up that morning throwing up, and we go into the challenge. Mm -hmm. It was just so hot. Like, I thought I was digging my grave to bury myself. I'm just like, I'm digging my grave. I might die in this <laughs> hole, but keep digging. I'm going to, you know, I might die in here. But anyway, so, you know, I just kept digging. And uh, after, you know, Caleb went out, I actually got medical called on me as well because the producers uh, made Dr. Joe come over because I was shaking pretty bad uh, from dehydration. And just everyone going down at once, it was an overwhelming feeling. But, you know, it also shows the fans that this is real, what we're doing out here. You know, we don't cameras don't go off and we don't get water and food behind the scenes like this is something that not many people can do and it is a tough day right I mean, I was just talking to Caleb about you know because he was on Big Brother versus Survivor and he said really I mean Survivor is just a whole nother league out there like you have to be so strong to do Survivor right I think it looks a lot easier on TV than when you're actually out there in this game and another thing is, okay, why were we competing for coffee when it was like 110 degrees outside? Like, am I just going <laughs> to sit around my camp like, hey, guys, let's uh, boil a pot of coffee? Like, no, right. not. I don't know what we were competing for out there. What would have been a really good reward, like something you were craving, like either food oh, or Oh, I wanted snow cones. I said that in my interviews. I was wanting snow cones. I guess just because I thought the higher rated sounded fun. So, yeah, I was like, Jeff, we need a generator. I need a snow cone machine out here, not coffee. I don't even drink coffee, so that was just kind of weird that we were competing for coffee. Yeah, that is one of the weirder rewards they've had. Um, let's go back to that moment where you found the clue to the idol. Did you know at the time that Sydney kind of ruined your 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 secret, or did you only find out when you watched it on, on TV. You know, I knew that's when I uh, pretty much quit trusting my tribe, but um, I did trust Sydney in the second episode, but what it comes down to is that was my biggest mistake in the game, but it's not that I really wanted to share it with her. It's 
things happen so fast, I just wasn't thinking. It just happened in the moment, and I wish I could have taken it back. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that – because you guys filmed this almost a year ago, right? Is there anything that you've been waiting to get off your chest? Like, I can't – I need to say this. Uh, like, about, like, the, the game or – yeah, about, like, anything that happened out there, like, you were worried it might be, you know, portrayed the wrong way. Yeah, I mean, I definitely got portrayed in the wrong light the first episode. I definitely did pull my weight around camp. But I think, you know, the second episode, you know, it did show me not giving up on the fire. And Scott just gave up and quit after 15 minutes to take nap time. He was kind of the dinosaur of the tribe. And he didn't really pull his weight around camp. And he thought, you know, I think he was going through, like, a midlife identity crisis because after one of the challenges, he's like, Alicia just wants to talk about herself. It's like, um, Scott, all you did was talk about yourself. Like, he thinks he's LeBron James and God's gift to basketball, and that's not the case. And he had the audacity to tell me in the game, oh, just keep being a cheerleader. It's all you're good at. And I'm like, Scott, half your NBA career was from the bench cheering your team on. You know, you're – just as much of a cheerleader as you're calling me. So, <laughs> yeah, wasn't a fan of Scott. I mean, he didn't really do anything. He said I was the weakest. This is what I said it's a, in my other interviews. I said, okay, we don't have water. We don't have food. We're, we're weak. And I sat around, and, yeah, it took me five hours because we had a rainstorm. Before the show, I could make Splint in 15 minutes, okay? It took me that long because of the rain. And I didn't quit after 15 minutes and take a nap for five hours. And once I did get fired, we did have food, we did have water, and our tribe did become stronger. So to say, you know, I'm not strong, well, what are you? What did Scott do with our tribe? What weight did he pull? So right. I don't think he really did anything beneficial, like anything for our tribe that really stood out that much to me. So. Do you think you could have made it further if you were on the Brains tribe or on the Beauty tribe? Oh, I don't – if I was on the brand tribe, hey. <laughs> no, I think I, – that's funny you said that. Um, yeah, I probably could have made it further on the brand tribe because <laughs> – I'm just kidding. The beauty tribe, I could have made it further. But, I mean, Braun did say it's his personality, and I don't feel like my head was fully – I'm sure you can tell by talking to me on the phone. I'm opinionated. I speak my voice a lot. And it wasn't exactly shown like that in the show. So, um. I definitely have a very, very feisty personality, and I know that Jeff did pick up on that, and he's been traveling, and Alicia doesn't take lip from anyone. If those guys right. would have said more to my face, there would have been a lot more confrontation. But they didn't have the audacity except to say it behind my back. So, you know, say it to my face if you're going to say it. And this is the season of the injuries. Did you leave the island with any major, you know, cuts or bruises or anything you took with you on your body? Uh, when I was going to get the immunity idol, Jason shoved me as hard as he could into rock. So I had a scar wow. on my leg from that. He has absolutely no respect for women, and it's really sad because he's, he talks about his daughters. If you have these two little girls, it's going to be sad when they grow up and see how their father acts. Like, to, if you want to portray yourself in that light, I mean, it's it's sad because you're not a role model and you have no respect for women or your little girls if you're going to go out and project that type of attitude towards other women. So mm -hmm. um, I had that, and then I had um, my hands got really, really cut up the first day, and I had got an infection in them, and um, they were just real deep slits. So if you look at episode one and two in the challenge when I'm pulling the rope or whatever I'm doing, my hand will always be wrapped. I thought I needed a stitch in, in the palm of my hand, and so it was a bad place to injure trying to make fire and – do all the challenges, so I had big slips in the palm of my hand. So in most in most of the first and second episode, it's wrapped with a buff. You'll, you'll notice that wow. if you go back and watch. So, so yeah. But other than that, I was just throwing up from dehydration, and I was really sick out there. Um, at the immunity challenge, after you guys lost, there was talk about maybe just having the tribal council right there. But what what happened when you got back? Were you trying to scramble to maybe get votes? Yeah, on the I side? tried to get Sydney. I tried to get Sydney to vote against the guy. It didn't end up happening. And then I went in the woods for hours just hoping there might be some type of twist with another idol. But I was mm. unsuccessful. But if you come to if you come in Survivor just to quit, then why are you playing the game? Right. And how big of a fan were you of Survivor? Were you one of the super fans or just an occasional viewer? No, I watched like two episodes and then I applied. And they called me within 24 hours and they were interested in me. 
And I, I, I'm always very honest. They're like, how okay, so you really like the show. I'm like, uh, no, I'm not going to lie. I've seen about two episodes, and I just see it as a challenge, <laughs> and I think it's something that I want to do. And they're like, you've seen two episodes? I'm like, yep. They're like, we need you to watch a whole series, but we're interested in you. So I watched, I, I knocked out a whole series, and I called them back, and they moved me along in the process. So I'm not That's a super so funny. Fan. Which season did you watch? I'm just curious. I had watched, well, now that I've been on the show, you know, I've watched more seasons. But the first one that I ever watched was, actually, they had me watch the other season of Beauty vs. Brain vs. Brawn. Oh, okay. So, um, so, yeah, so that was the first one that I had ever, ever watched. Oh, my gosh, it was so fun to talk to you. I wish we had seen more of you on TV. Like you, And you that's really where a lot are. of my frustration comes in is because, my friends that know me, they don't think my character on TV is me. And um, the more you – if you actually talk to me on the phone or you talk to me in person, I'm opinionated. I'll, I mean, I will – you know, I'll, I'll tell my opinion about people. And I felt on the show I was just kind of like – they didn't air any of my interviews when I talked about Scott and Jason. Oh, I had things to say. And they didn't air any of those. So, I mean, I don't really feel like I, they got to see the true me <laughs> in a lot of the show, but, um, you know, I can't change that. Like, with Jason, they're like, day one. They're like, what do you think of Jason? I'm like, okay, this dude, uh, he has these pink diamond earrings in his ear, and he's trying to be intimidating. Like, all he's selling me with is mall cop. He probably rolls around the mall on a Segway and thinks he's a badass. And then he had a day <laughs> where, you know, Jason says, oh, yeah, I go get, I go find all the bad guys, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the, one of the best bounty hunters. Midlife identity crisis, maybe. So there's a day um, Jason lets our chicken loose. And Jason can't even catch our chicken that he let loose. Darnell had to go catch the chicken. Jason just ran in circles. And it's like, really, dude, you go out and catch all the bad boys, but you can't even catch the chicken you let out. I think you're all talk, dude, all talk. So that was my opinion on Jason's like, day, day one, <laughs> which didn't uh, get aired. And, right. And final question here, if you if you were on the jury, who do you hope makes it to the end? Like, who do you want to win the million dollars? Who would you vote for? Um, and it doesn't have to be Anna, from your tribe, top, like anyone. Oh, like one person or the top three? Uh, top three, let's do that, yeah. <laughs> I would do, like, um, Anna, Ty, and Michelle. Okay. Those are some good ones. Mm-hmm. All right, well, Alicia, it was so great to talk to you, and we hope to see you at the reunion here in a couple months. You'll see me, and I look forward to meeting you guys. Thanks for having me. Okay, bye-bye.